In this lesson, we'll discuss how to derive the overall rate law from a reaction mechanism. The mechanism of a reaction is like a recipe. It's a detailed step-by-step -step description of how the reaction actually occurs. Each step in the mechanism is called an elementary reaction. Each elementary reaction shows you exactly what chemical species have to come together to produce the products needed for the rest of the mechanism. Let's take an example. The mechanism consists of two elementary reactions. One, P plus Q going to B, which is slow. And two, B plus Q going to 2R, which is fast. Before we look at the mechanism further, let's determine the overall reaction first. If you add up everything on the left and right sides of all the steps and cancel the duplicate species, you should get the overall reaction. For this example, it is P plus 2Q going to 2R. The species B does not show up in the overall reaction. It's called an intermediate because it is generated by one step and consumed by a later one. The first step indicates that molecules P and Q have to literally run into each other to form B. The encounter allows the two molecules to interact with each other in, in order to get a chance to make the intermediate B. The probability of encounter between the two molecules naturally depends on how many P and Q are there in the volume. So we expect the success rate of making B by the first reaction is proportional to the concentration of P times the concentration of Q. So the rate of the first reaction is equal to some constant we call K1 multiplied by the concentrations of P and Q. Similarly, the rate of the second reaction is K2 times the concentration of B and Q. Because the first reaction is slow, it becomes a bottleneck for the entire mechanism. The rate of the overall reaction is therefore controlled by the step. This is called the rate determining step. Therefore, the rate of the overall reaction is just the rate of the slow step and is equal to K1 times the concentration of P and Q. So the overall rate is first order in P and first order in Q. Notice that the order of the reaction cannot be deduced from the stoichiometric coefficients alone. Next, we consider a second mechanism. One, P plus Q going to B, which is slow, and two, B plus Q going to P plus 2R, which is fast. If you write down the overall reaction for this mechanism, you find that it is 2Q going to 2R, or simply Q going to R. Since the slow step in this reaction is the same as the previous one, the overall rate law is unchanged too. So the overall rate must also be equal to K1 times the concentrations of P and Q. Interestingly, even though P doesn't show up in the overall reaction, it affects the rate of the overall reaction. This means that P is a catalyst in this mechanism. The difference between a catalyst and an intermediate, which also does not show up in the overall reaction, is that the catalyst is fed into the reaction and regenerated at the end. Finally, we'll consider one more mechanism. One, P plus Q going to B, which is fast and 2, B plus Q going to 2R, which is slow. Notice that this is the same mechanism as the first one, except the second step is now rate determining instead of the first. The overall rate is equal to the rate of the second reaction, which is K2 times B times Q. But the concentration of the intermediate should not show up in the rate law, because the rate law is supposed to reflect how the rate depends on the reactant concentrations, so we, we must get rid of B. The common assumption in this case is to assume that reaction 1 is so fast that its forward and backward rates have come into equilibrium. So we add a backward arrow to the first step and call the rate constant of the backward step K minus 1. The backward reaction of step 1 has rate equals to K minus 1 times the concentration of B. And we set the forward rate of step 1 equal to the backward rate. Now we see that from the equilibrium assumption, we can get an expression for B in terms of the reactant concentrations.
Finally, substituting this back into the expression for the overall rate, we find that the rate is first order in P and second order in Q. So even with the same mechanism, simply interchanging the fast and slow steps can result in very different overall rates.